Hello and welcome back. Eddie Radosovich, Bob Prisbillo, joined by Joe Castiglione Jr. A little stickball report for this week. Oklahoma softball, obviously, off to a uh, fantastic start. Now 28-1, and one, uh, coming off of a win, uh, another run rule, a 10-run, uh, what was that, third inning? Second, on, second, second inning, inning on yep. Wednesday night. We'll get to the softball stuff here in a little bit. They got a big series coming up on the weekend with Baylor, the uh, game Friday night over at Hall of Fame Stadium. Yep. Hopefully the weather gets a little bit better than it is outside. Good thing that thing's not starting on Thursday this week, but the last two games of the series – at Love's Field down in Norman. Let's stick with the baseball stuff. Off to a uh, fantastic start in conference play. 6-0 and on the year in Big 12 play. Back-to-back -back sweeps over Central Florida in Norman to open the Big 12 conference uh, play. And then another uh, really good weekend. Coming off of an excellent weekend down in Shocking. Fort Worth. A shocking weekend. Get uh, all three. Yeah, it was, it was a really, really strong performance to uh, sweep TCU. Now you look up, all of a sudden they have two series sweeps over the other two top teams as far as RPI standards go. But there has been some bad news. Not talking about the setback on Tuesday night. Another loss to Dallas Baptist. A 6 nothing uh, loss in which an offense just couldn't perform. Couldn't get the big hit when they needed it. Didn't think the pitching was really all that bad. But the bad news is coming out of Saturday night down in Fort Worth. John Spikerman is going to be out four to six weeks. Broke the hammock bone. Didn't even know that existed. Hand, <laughs> had no idea. Uh, and the way that it was explained to me was uh, he swings at an 0-2 count, strikes out in the sixth inning on uh, Saturday night when Oklahoma was still trailing in the game. And uh, he's going to be out for a while, obviously. Sidelined. He had surgery on Tuesday. Uh, you know, Skip Johnson talked to him after the game Tuesday night, said that the uh, medical team did a really good job uh, to get him not only back to Norman, but get him into the surgery room back and realize that's what they days. need to do. You don't see that very often. Nope. It's like a, a non-essential bone in your hand, though. They basically go in, they take it out, and he's going to be fine. Obviously, he's not going to be gripping a baseball bat very off, or very soon. He will be able to pinch run. So that's, a, I guess, at the end of the day, that's some good news. But you're obviously missing uh, somebody that has been a key cog in your center field defensively. Uh, you're missing the guy at the top of the lineup that has had an electric start to the season. Um, and that's where you get into uh, kind of the situation now that is at hand for Oklahoma in the outfield. Uh, I think that the way that he came off of the weekend, Carter Frederick, would automatically, you would think that's going to be the guy. More bad news. Uh, I, I'm hoping to get a little bit more. This is We're taping this before we go to talk to, to Skip Johnson today. Uh, but he's going to be sidelined for uh, a couple weeks with a, uh, a thumb injury uh, that he sustained before the game on Tuesday afternoon. So immediately your depth is being uh, kind of tested in the outfield, gentlemen. Uh, and I think that Jason Walk is going to be a guy, a true freshman out of Georgia. He's the number two uh, rated player in the state of Georgia. He's going to be a guy that they're going to have to really rely on. He had a couple hits on uh, Tuesday night against Dallas Baptist, as well as uh, Rocco Garza Gangora. They need to get his bat going, and I think that will happen with more uh, at-bats here in the coming weeks. So that's kind of the rundown about what's going on with OU baseball. Uh, a lot of good, but the depth in the outfield is really going to be tested. What what stood out the most about that weekend sweep? Because I we we talked last week. Man, yeah. you, get, you get one. Oh yeah, we sat here two, on the stickball report two, last like, week. Yes, we yeah. did all three. I think we all said that if uh, or we both agreed that if they were just able to get one down in Fort Worth, you get out of there and you're now uh, what three and two in conference play. But it's the opposite. They sweep. They are at six and zero. Oh. The biggest thing for them, I think, was just getting a little bit of everything from somebody. And it, if it wasn't, you know, Carter Frederick and the big hits that he had, it was Bryce Majin, or it was uh, John Spikerman had a couple of big RBIs, or it was uh, just whoever up and down the lineup. Michael Snyder had a really good performance in the game two and game three. Uh, so, and that's kind of been the story of Oklahoma season so far is being able to get something from somebody every night. And it's been a different guy. They've been, it's kind of been an ultimate team start here specifically over the last couple of weeks in conference play. Uh, Joe, I know that you're out there quite a bit over at El Dell. What has uh, kind of been the uh, big thing that has popped off the page to you? Kind of building off that, too. And with those injuries, you're going to have to continue that theme going forward because yeah. with stepping up, you're going to see a lot of these young guys are going to get in. Um, you know, a the, the couple of guys that you mentioned, they are extremely athletic, so maybe they can pick up that stolen base production. You know, they like to play the brand of baseball, a lot of Chaos. running. Yeah. Um, sometimes it doesn't look great. Sometimes it looks really smart. Um, it's just how the system plays. And so the thing that stood out to me was 
honestly, it's kind of how the pitching is developed. You look at the box score, they give up six runs against a Dallas Baptist, but they threw a lot of arms. Yeah. And you kind of it was a Johnny Holt all staff night, correct? And so like Jet Lod- Jet Lotus comes out and strikes out the side of the first, and then you know he gives up a single, and they bring in, uh, I think they brought in. Uh, well, Chase they, he gave up the solo shot to start the second. Shot. It was it's one smoke. nothing, and then they're like, yeah. okay, we're we're good on that. Exactly, come and do your part, and then you give up six runs to a really good Dallas Baptist team midweek. You kind of got to move the goalpost a little bit. Yeah. They're going to be higher scoring games, so that's when the offense didn't hold up their end of the bargain. But the thing that's kind of stood out to me is just how that pitching staff is developed. Uh, Grant Stevens continues to be a really good guy. Um, I think he's gonna. It's gonna be a, it, kind of almost a specialty. He's gonna be a really good guy out of the bullpen, especially on Tuesday nights. And it's a. It's almost a good problem to have. The guy started as a Friday night guy last year over at Pacific. And when they uh, got the commitment of him from Pacific, he didn't have a great ERA, so they did a good job evaluating him, looking at the film, and thinking this is the guy that we can see. Uh, be a key cog, uh, you know, just kind of throwing a couple innings in the weekend and then in that midweek role. Um, Got to talk about the Witherspoon. Um, they Witherspoon brothers, they continue they to develop. They were phenomenal over the weekend down in Fort Worth. They both give you something that is play winning baseball. And then kind of just the bounce back of Jamie Hitt. You know, he had yeah. a couple bad outings uh, towards the end of the out-of-conference play. Uh, and he's going forward, and he's kind of developing a little bit. So just how that pitching staff has developed, uh, I think the uh, offense not really showing up is kind of an anomaly uh, for this team. And so, but they're going to need to get it going uh, going forward because it doesn't stop. West Virginia is a really good ball club coming in. Then they got that. Is it a four game series against Lamar the following weekend, Easter weekend? <sighs> I'd have to look. I, I think it's thir- I think it's Thursday through Saturday. It's a little bit different though because Easter weekend's Easter, coming up. Yeah. Softball mm-hmm. probably doing the same thing as well uh, <laughs> to get out of there before Sunday. But yeah, that's it's going to be really interesting to hear over the next couple of weeks because you open a home stand. It's an, uh, a little bit of an awkward eight game home stand. Stepping out of conference play next week. I, I look at this weekend though as uh, kind of big. I mean, it, you could really start gaining ground separating. in first yeah. place mm-hmm. and starting to separate from everybody else if you're able to start out even at worst eight and one uh, this weekend with uh, taking two or three from a West Virginia team that's coming in. Uh, they lose to Ohio State last weekend, lose two or three, gave up 26 runs on Sunday. So, uh, you know, they will be looking to uh, bounce back a little bit uh, and get back into form. More of a big, big picture. Big The, the Big 12 through the first couple of weeks. Better, worse? Probably somewhere in the middle. I, I think that it's been a very up and down start because you look at some of the teams that were believed to be, you know, the higher higher ranked or higher seeded teams in, uh, you know, all the polls. And you look at TCU and all of a sudden they're one and five right now in conference play coming off of the sweep of Oklahoma. And you look at Texas has been up and down throughout. Oklahoma State has had their fair share of ups and downs. So uh, I think that, you know, the cream always kind of rises to the top, especially in the sport of baseball or softball. You're going to see those teams uh, probably uh, get right. And then all of a sudden it's going to be kind of crowded at the top of the uh, top of the Big 12 standings. I think it's just a group together. You're kind of going to see that Big 12 basketball standings uh, kind of take place towards the end of uh, t- as the season progresses for baseball as well. I think Texas and Oklahoma State are a couple teams that are going to turn it on. But once again, OU is the benefactor, but TCU going 1-5 and five is really surprising. They had a great out-of-conference schedule, played a lot of good teams, won a lot of games, yep. including, I think, a three-game sweep against the UCLA ball club. But Going forward, you just got to keep stacking wins. Last year, they had a couple series where they really should have won. Baylor, most notably, you know, you get swept by Kansas State. So avoiding not losing all three or getting two out of three, you're going to put yourself in a really good position. You might look up later this year, and they're fighting for a conference championship. Yeah, and if you do that, if you can just finish in the top three or the top four of the Big 12, I think you kind of position yourself to possibly be a team that could host a regional, which you know I think would be obviously a step in the right direction for a program that is headed into the SEC where I think everybody kind of knows the uh, the bit there. Really, really good baseball being played in the Southeastern Conference. So all in all, I would say it's been a pretty good start, especially in conference play and especially, uh, like you said, Joe, just keep stacking – uh, really good weekends, and all of a sudden you're going to look up and maybe you will be in something of a, uh, a conference title race for the regular season. And now it just looks like they need to avoid uh, any more injuries. Easier yeah. said than yeah. done. Sure. But those two guys losing them in the outfield because you really two looked at Carter Frederick. Kind of freak accidents, too, or freak injuries. If bad luck, you know. yeah, if anything. Yeah, it is really bad luck. So they're going to be tested. The good news is they do have a, some depth in the outfield, and 
you know, I think it is going to be Jason Walk. I do think it's going to be uh, Rocco Garza Gangora. If Rocco's not comfortable playing center, he did on Saturday night down in Fort Worth. You can always move Bryce Madron over to center field. He can play one of the corner outfield positions. And uh, Kendall Pettis can just hold everything down and left. Who's been your biggest surprise? Let's go offensively I, for the team this year. Michael Snyder. I, yeah. I think just because you didn't know, I think that there was a lot of talk about what he was going to bring to the lineup. A little bit more pop coming over from Washington. Uh, he's been fantastic. Uh, offensively, he's been excellent. And I think that you look at, turn that off. <laughs> what happened? What is, oh, it's it's the iPad back here. Oh. Hold, please. <laughs> <laughs> but with Michael Snyder, I mean, Ben, 348. Uh, 696 slugging percentage uh, coming from a Washington ball, uh, Washington team that made the NCAA tournament, made a little noise in the Stillwater regional last year. He's been really good in a lot of key positions, a lot of runners on positions. So He's thank been, you. Thank you, Edward, for turning the iPad off. You're, no not problem. Breaking it over. I, I don't know. I don't even know what the alarm was. <laughs> To be honest with you, it said the uh, the find my iPad alert, which I don't think anybody's looking for an iPad. So that was interesting. Uh, Michael Snyder, though, that would be my answer on the bump if you wanted to go on the defense. And by the way, Michael Snyder's been fantastic in the field as really well. Really good. Playing both corner and field positions. They need to get Anthony McKenzie going a little bit after he missed the first series of the weekend. Or the first, uh, not series, but the first weekend of the season uh, down in Arlington. They need to get his bat going. I'm not too worried about that right now. Uh, and, you know, I think that everything is kind of slowing down. We talked about the catcher position. Were they going to, you know, kind of alternate? But it seems like Easton Carmichael starting to be the guy there. I think they want to get some other bats into the lineup. And you have to – you're going to obviously keep Easton Carmichael in. If you want to do that, you got to DH somebody else. So that would probably be my answer to uh, the offensive side. As for the defensive side, it, it's hard to go past what – both of the Witherspoon brothers have been able to do. Kyson and Malachi have been excellent. They've kind of started to, I think, carve out some roles for themselves as well, uh, being some uh, guys that you could really kind of count on out of the bullpen. And if you really, really needed to, you could probably start one of those guys in the conference play on during the weekend regional, or a regional, regional or something like that. So it, it's good problems to have uh, when you're talking about all the arms that they're trying to get into ball games. And like you said, they threw seven, eight, nine guys on Tuesday night. I thought they all looked pretty good. They all had pretty good moments. They kept them in the game uh, at least close enough that you gave the offense a chance and they just weren't able to get it through. That's a Dallas Baptist club. A lot of pop. Yeah. A lot of power. Yeah. Oh, they could really hit. Excellent. And once again, just to keep it to six runs when your offense isn't it, it performing was, at was, all. It was, it was so it's a bigger win. It's for the pitching staff. It's a bigger win than what sure. you see on paper. It was three to nothing going into the top of yeah. the ninth and the bottom kind of fell out. You can't walk guys. Can't make errors. It, kind of one of those things so we'll see so far so good for the Oklahoma baseball team as for the softball team the beat goes on Bob absolutely 40 to 3 you know, we I mean just an week. ass whooping out <laughs> Lubbock over it the really weekend because we knew Texas Tech didn't have the pitching sure. but we thought Texas Tech had been bringing the hitting 21 and 5 for a reason and what Kelly Maxwell and Nicole May and Kirsten Deal were able to do that's kind of the blueprint of how they would obviously love the rest of the season to roll. Talking about Kelly Maxwell coming off of a week uh, a weekend in which she was honored as the uh, not only the Big 12 Pitcher of the Week, but the National Player of the Week. Last week, we had talked about her kind of basically kind of taking that number one role. It seems like she's really starting to run with it. She did it again. You know, she comes off the five-inning no-hitter Tuesday to strike out 10 and 6. To that'll be, do. To, that'll, that'll do. That'll, that'll work just fine and just we got the chance to talk to her again on Tuesday night the confidence is next level it's almost bordering on arrogance because she knows how well how in control she I'm is sure there's a level moment. I'm sure there's a level of comfort when you step into the circle and you know you know if I were to happen to give up two or three runs I think I'm so, probably pretty good exactly and that's that was something patty mentioned i guess what uh kirsten deal gave it like a home uh home run o uh over the weekend mm -hmm. she's like what what's happened oh you softball she's yeah like, just calm down people. yeah it's gonna be okay the other teams are allowed to score you're not gonna shut them out every single time but what they did in lubbock in those conditions very impressive very impressive indeed and you know just in terms of uh, the offensive production obviously scoring 40 runs Seemed like Tiara Jennings had a really good weekend out there. She did. And you, you, we talked last week about a slump for her is going 0 for 7. And she's so long past that. And I think what it is is some of these seniors are starting to round 
back into form. Sure. There's, you know, I don't know. They're not like coasting. It was the youngins that was carrying everybody yeah. offensively for a while. I don't want to say they were like coasting through the first month, but Patty mentioned the motivation factor mm-hmm. being an issue, and so I brought that up Tuesday. She's like, oh, no, we are good. We're walking into the fire. We know what's coming. We're excited for it. We're all starting to hit that type of level that we need to hit throughout the rest of the season. 8,900 people a year ago for OU Texas uh, at the Hall of Fame Stadium game. Uh, the same kind of bit coming up this weekend, hosting Baylor in Oklahoma City Friday night. I would imagine it's going to be another really good crowd. It'll be a really good crowd. Now you're going to flip it because Baylor's pitching is Ben Elite. Sure. You know, I mean, you look at the one and five conference start and you look at getting swept at Kansas. They allowed six runs in three three games. That's your offense not not showing up. Yeah. So we'll see just how good this Baylor pitching is when they face the Sooners. What has uh, been kind of some of the stuff? I, I don't know if we've uh, caught up with you uh, since the opening of Love's Field. What a beautiful pro- uh, short, stadium that the, is. Uh, short sleeve uh, March March 1st. <laughs> I'll give a little context to it. I didn't plan to wear short sleeves. I wore a jacket and it had some white stuff. Uh-huh. And then I saw my name tag right next to Patty Gasso's. And I said, wow, I'm going to be sitting next to her. I need to take off this jacket that has a stain on it. So I had to rock the short There's going to be some pictures taken. I need to look exactly. good in those pictures. I'm still trying to find those uh, pictures of one goat and one regular person right. in, the, in the picture. But I wore short sleeves. Chris Plank called me out on it. I It was a good time. It's a beautiful facility. Um, it's kind of funny driving by every day, and of course, they're still working on it. We know the they're still not practicing on it. Yeah, correct. It's insane. So the, the player facilities are not ready yet, and so they're still working with Marita Hines Field. But just seeing them work, like do some actual structural work on that day in and day out, getting it ready for another weekend, and so it's like three days to get another three days of work done, and then so forth. But facility, it blew my expectations out of the water. Um, we knew it was going to be nice. Uh, but really how nice, how quaint, and how kind of big it feels. Yes. Um, it feels a lot bigger than any of my anticipation. But And then now that the team is kind of rounding form, uh, starting to hit the ball. I mean, you saw girls that are starting to hit the ball. They kind of were early in the year. It's going to be a lot of fun with these series coming up, you know, back into the Big 12 going forward. Uh, Bob, who do you think – now that Kelly Maxwell is really established as the number one pitcher, that was kind of the question mark a couple weeks ago, kind of with the fielding, um, a shortstop. You know, we're finding issues uh, with this ball club that aren't we're, there. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're really looking. Nitpicking. We're looking. When you're the 28 needle. and one, you we're really got to put it under the microscope. <laughs> so I mean, it's kind of funny when you're questioning a player of the prowess of Tra Jennings and her defensive ability, but just coming from Grace Lyons. But and then the next thing kind of turned of who's the number one pitcher for this ball club? Seems Kelly Maxwell has taken that throne. Who's kind of settling in for that second and third role? You know, they have a lot of arms. They're going to use them all. We know that. But who do you kind of see, like, rolling out in game two? I know they – Kirsten Deal was a starter this weekend. Yep. This game, Saturday game two. Uh, Nicole guys, May, Sunday. Yep. Yeah. So, do you think it's going to be kind of going back and forth? Or who do you really see settling in that number I two I kind of like that. I like going Maxwell, Deal, May. And then during the mid the during the during midweek, you go Carly Keeney like you did last night and going in the next week at, at Wichita State. And – Peyton Moncelli and S.J. Guerin can just kind of be ready for any situationally based things. But I think you're starting to get to a point now where Patty's letting those three start to develop their arm strength, start to get ready. Like, you need to put in more than three or four innings. And we talk about uh, May from last Sunday, season-long outing. It's like, yeah, you need to start. It's, it's nice to go 3-2-2, two, two, you know, and, and you got the arms to try to make that happen. But eventually you need them to show you what they can do in five, six, seven inning games. It's, it's funny how far we've come from the days of Paige Parker and the oh, other yeah. Kalani Ricketts just throwing game after game. And you're, gonna, you're wondering if their arms were going to fall off. And now you're talking about three, four, five pitchers who can pitch on any given day. It's kind of funny seeing that transition. Softball's kind of moved that way as a whole, but just seeing this Oklahoma ball club rely a little bit less on one arm and just go into a whole staff. Yeah, it was. And that's one of the questions I had for Patty uh, way back in fall ball. Like, how did you convince Carly Keeney, Pey- Peyton Monchette, like, okay, they're in. Oh, now you're getting Kelly Maxwell. How do you get all that, that cohesion from you know, ladies that are used to being the number one, especially Carly Keene, Liberty, of like being the ace of their staff, putting those innings, inning after inning, and now your role is totally different. And just the way that they've all ex- accepted it, 
and you know they've adapted to it and adjusted to where now they all know what they need to do here during the next two three months it's going to be interesting obviously they are primed to uh defend the most bull national titles here over the next couple or the last couple years uh it's gonna be fun to watch we appreciate it all right boys that was good we'll uh We'll be back next week talking stickball. Obviously, some big weekends ahead with Baylor and uh, West Virginia coming to town on the softball and the baseball side. So uh, we'll be out there. It's going to be fun. It's going to be busy over there on the uh, the south side of campus here coming up over the next couple of weeks. For Bob and for Joe, I'm Eddie. We'll see you right back here on the Studerscoop.com YouTube page next week for a stickball report.